angiosperms, sometimes also called as flowering plants, or magnoliophyta, or a name given to these angiosperms is anthophyta. This is a group of plant which is most common and diverse group of land plants with over 2.6 lakh species distributed all over the world. These angiosperms grow virtually in every habitable region and are dominant in some aquatic and most of the terrestrial ecosystems. In fact, majority of our plants which we use economically for different purposes like food, fodder, fuel, fiber or even medicinal plants. Majority of these plants belong to angiosperms. At present, the angiosperms are thought to be very closely related to another group of plants called as gymnosperms. That's why sometimes we call angiosperms as sister group to the gymnosperms. Gymnosperms are basically plants with necked seeds. There are several diagnostic features, unique features, which distinguish these angiosperms from rest of the land plants. Out of the various diagnostic features, the most important is the presence of flower within the angiosperms. The flower is usually associated with accessory whorls in the form of perianth. In a flower, we have also the reproductive parts in the form of androsium and gynosium. Androsium is comprised of the stamens, that is the male part of the flower, with two lateral theca. Each of these theca is comprised of two microsporangia. We have a reduced three nucleate male gametophyte within the angiosperms. The female part, that is the carpus within a flower, it has a stigmatic surface which is used for pollen germination. One more diagnostic character of angiosperms is that they have a reduced female gametophyte which usually comprises of eight nuclei but seven cells. The seed which is produced within the carpus it is enveloped, it is surrounded within the fruit wall. One more unique feature associated with angiosperms is a phenomenon called as double fertilization. What is this double fertilization? It leads to the formation of a triploid nutritive tissue called as endosperm. Also we have anatomically speaking in angiosperms, the presence of vessels in the xylem tissue. One more diagnostic feature of angiosperms by which it differs from rest of the land plants is that their sieve tube elements are always accompanied by one or more companion cells in the phloem tissue. Charles Darwin, an evolutionary biologist, once remarked that the relatively rapid evolutionary diversification of angiosperms, he used a phrase, abominable mystery. The earliest fossil record of angiosperms is in the form of pollen grains that has been recorded from the earliest Cretaceous period. It is a geological period round about 140 million years ago. That means we have the first record of evolution of angiosperms by the way of their pollinus about 140 million years ago. The flower, which is most distinguishing feature of angiosperms, it dates back slightly later in the fossil record. That is about 
130 million years ago. These earliest flowering plants in the fossil record can now easily be assigned to the present day living groups of angiosperms. Many major angiosperm lineages can be recognized by the mid Cretaceous period. For example, water lilies, magnolites, and the eudicots were present by 125 million years ago. Traditionally, the closest relative of angiosperms that I have already mentioned were the gymnosperms. They have been considered as the closest relative of angiosperms. However, the details of angiosperm evolution from a possible gymnosperm ancestor is not very much clear. There are various hypotheses that trace the evolution of angiosperms from gymnosperms. One of the widely debated hypotheses is that Mesozoic binitite tails also called as cycadoides, could be the possible ancestors to angiosperms because these cycadoids they produced large flower-like reproductive structures. These flower-like reproductive structures have pollen producing organs which are surrounded by a central stalk which bears naked seeds. Gymnosperms such as knee tails along with the already extinct Benita tails were widely believed to be related to the angiosperms on the basis of several morphological similarities. Some of these morphological similarities are vessels in the wood. Both angiosperms as well as knee tails and the Benita tails, they have vessels in their wood. One more similarity is reticulate leaves in Needham and also the flower-like reproductive organs. Based on the phylogenetic analysis of morphological data, it was concluded that angiosperm formed a clade, formed a monophyletic group with knee tails on one side and benita tails on other side. This group both angiosperms and knee tails and benita tails together, they were referred to as anthophytes. This name anthophyte was in relation to the flower like reproductive structures. However, very recently, this viewpoint has completely changed. For example, vessel elements are now reinterpreted as being derived independently. That means a product of parallel evolution. For example, in knee tails, they are derived from circular bordered pits, while as in angiosperms, they are derived from tracheids with scalar form pits. widely debated hypothesis about the evolution of angiosperms is that angiosperms were derived from an extinct mesozoic pteridosperms. The pteridosperms also sometimes called as seed ferns. These were a group of mesozoic fossil plants that possessed seeds. They had seeds but their leaves were just like ferns. Some of the members in the pteridosperms may represent possible angiosperm progenitors. One such fossil taxon that best exemplifies a possible transition to angiosperms is named as Catonia. This Catonia possessed reproductive structures very similar to those what we see in angiosperms. In Catonia, the male reproductive structure, it resembles anthers in consisting of a fusion product called as synangium, which bears three or four 
microsporangia. However, these synangia differ from angiosperm anthers in having radial symmetry in contrast to bilateral symmetry in majority of the angiosperms. The female reproductive structures of Catonia consist of a spike-like arrangement of units that have been termed as cupules. Each cupule encloses a cluster of unitasmic ovules or seeds with a small opening in the cupule near the proximal end. The cupule has been hypothesized as being homologous with the angiosperm carpal. However, it differs in having a conduplicate megasporophyll which bears ovules along its two margins. Additionally, the monosalcate pollen grains have been reported at the micropyle of catunia ovules. The latter is a strong evidence that the pollen grains were transported directly to the ovules, perhaps by means of a pollination droplet, as we commonly see in present-day gymnosperms, rather than what we see in angiosperms as a stigmatic region, where pollen tubes are formed in the angiosperms. Therefore, the cupule did not function as a carpal in terms of a site for pollen germination, what we see in angiosperms. Another viewpoint about the cupule of Ketunia is that it is a homologue of second integument which is present in the ovules of majority of the angiosperms and might have evolved by reduction of the number of ovules within the cupule to just sing. Although the homology of reproductive structures in Ketunia with reference to angiosperms is largely unclear. Still, they are closely related to the angiosperms than to the gymnosperms. Very recently, a fossil plant by the name of Archipractus, which was collected from China, is believed to shed light on the early evolution of angiosperms. The fossil taxa dates back to as early as 130 million years ago during the early Cretaceous. The genus Archifractus, now with two described species, was apparently an aquatic plant and had dissected leaves and elongate reproductive axes. Each of these reproductive axes possess Peered stamens below and several seeded carpels above. The interpretation for the relationships of these structures with the present day angiosperms is highly debatable. According to one hypothesis, the reproductive axis that we see in Archipractus is an entire perianth less flower with stamens below and the carpels above. The axis is perhaps homologous to an elongate receptacle much similar to the magnolites. Thus, the reproductive structure in Archipractus might represent an ancestral flower or we can say a flower precursor. And therefore, this Archipractus might be sister all the present-day angiosperms. According to an alternate hypothesis, as I already mentioned, that this is highly debatable. That's why there have been different hypotheses. According to an alternative hypothesis, this reproductive axis of Archifractus is not a single typical flower, but an inflorescence. Inflorescence means an aggregation of flowers, wherein we have reduced male and female flowers as we see in many of the aquatic angiosperms today. From this alternative viewpoint, we can say the orchipractus may represent an extinct 
offshoot of an extant lineage that means which has been already extant but an offshoot of a living lineage within the angiosperms there are many guesses that it can be the extant lineage can be nymphales or some other aquatic angiosperm there are various evolutionary novelties that we see in angiosperms that are believed to have played a pivotal role in the diversification of angiosperms out of these various evolutionary novelties the pollination and fruit dispersal mechanisms are of great importance the pollination in particular by insects what is called as anemophily is even known from the fossil pinnitid tails and seed pearls the insect pollination was established by the time the core angiosperm had already evolved it was probably first carried out by pollen eating or pollen collecting insects especially beetles and flies and the flowers were pollinated by nectar collecting insects which evolved much later in the geological time scale it is now abundantly clear that the diversification within some angiosperms for example the orchids and the insect lineages on the other side are intimately linked together in a co-evolutionary manner in angiosperms we see the variation in fruit morphology is largely related to the use of different dispersal agents the fossil fruits and seeds of angiosperms from the cretaceous era or generally small and little specialized therefore they were little specialized for dispersal by mammals or birds adaptations for dispersal by frugivorous or granivorous animals in most of the lineages of angiosperms originated in the tertiary period the tertiary is the same period when the radiations of modern birds or mammals have occurred consequently as a result of this the evolution of large bright colored fruits and seeds in majority of the angiosperms was linked to the evolution of these animal groups which have helped in their fruit dispersal once angiosperms evolved as we have already discussed they diversified rapidly into several distinct lineages and gradually became the dominant components of the global vegetation at present the angiosperms are represented by about 2 lakh 60000 species we have at present the total number of land plants is 3 lakh species out of these 3 lakh species angiosperm consists of 2 lakh 60000 species these angiospermic species they display an amazing diversity of morphological anatomical biochemical and molecular characters and these species of angiosperms they can occur in an extremely wide array of terrestrial habitats or many angiosperms we see they have secondarily their habitats as the aquatic ecosystems Traditionally the angiosperms were recognized under two main groups of monocotyledons and dicotyledons however such a separation nowadays is believed to be an arbitrary one and it is no longer accepted as per the principle of monophyly for instance the possession of two cotyledons in the traditionally delimited dicotyledons is now considered to be an ancestral feature called as plesiomorphy and therefore paraphyletic on the basis of recent cladistic analysis the angiosperms are now recognized under the four so called groups not the erstwhile two groups monocotyledons and dicotyledons but four different groups the first group is what they call as anita grade second is magnolids third is monocots and the fourth is eudicots let us discuss these one by one the first one is the anita grade 
it's a small assemblage of non monocot and non eudicot angiosperms that means they are outside of monocots and eudicots this anita grade it includes lineages such as amboreales nymphiales ostrobelliales this group may be characterized by carpal margins usually sealed by a secretion whereas we have seen in majority of the angiosperms the carpels are closed by post genital fusion of epidermal layers members of these lineages that is the anita grade they have four nucleate female gametophyte and interestingly diploid endosperm whereas we know most of the angiosperms have an eight nucleate female gametophyte and a triploid endosperm the second group that is presently recognized under the angiosperms is called as magnolids it is basically it it basically comprises rest of the non monocot and non eudicot angiosperms it is a monophyletic group that's why it's sometimes called as clade this clade includes magnoliales laurels canalales and pipirales they have been long recognized as a major and a distinct group the monocots comprise nearly 56000 species that is it comes round about 22% of all the angiosperms monocots include the well known aroids arrow leaf plants our common lilies gingers or the diverse orchids irises palms and the most economically important grass traditionally the monocots have been distinguished by the occurrence of trimerous floral parts that means the floral parts are in three or multiples of three however recently this feature that means the trimerous is now considered to be an ancestral condition a plesiomorphy this ancestral condition is present in several non monocot lineages of angiosperms such as laurels magnoliales and pipirales all the members of the monocots they are characterized by few apomorphies that means some features which are common to all the monocots these may be number 1 sieve tube plastids with cunate cunate means wedge shaped proteinaceous inclusions of p2 type second apomorphy is attacto steel system vasculature what is this attacto steel system vasculature it consists of numerous discrete vascular bundles third apomorphy is the parallel leaf veneation and the fourth one and the most obvious one is the presence of a single cotyledon the various orders that have been recognized under the monocots at present are echorales elismetales mostly the aquatic herbs asparagales a large order wherein we have the orchidaceae family the orchids a diverse group of organisms then we have diasporales liliales the common lily family we have in under liliales then ericales ericales are the common palms coconut tree these are the various palm species which have been grouped under the ericales then we have comelinales then also gingerbreals and lastly the most economically important poales all these orders have been recognized under the monocots you means here the true dicots it's a large assemblage of angiosperms which is characterized by many 
apomorphies. Apomorphies means the shear derived characters. The apomorphy in eudicots are number one, the triculpate pollen grain. Number second is floral parts, they are arranged in whorls, not spirally arranged. The perianth which is present in the flowers of eudicots, it is clearly distinguishable into calyx and corolla. And these eudicots have plastids of sieve elements with star grains called as S type. The eudicots is a large group. It comprises of about 24 orders. At present, eudicots comprise nearly 1,90,000 species. This comes about 75% of all the angiosperms are represented by the eudicots. The various orders that have been recognized under the eudicots include starting with ranunculales, then we have proteales, a group of plants which is mostly restricted to South Africa. Then we have caryophyllales, a large group of plants which is recognized under the order caryophyllales, followed by centillales. The centillales order is followed by sexfragales. Then geraniales. Geraniales is an order wherein we have the common geraniums which we use as ornamental plants. Then we have meritales. Meritales is the same order wherein we have the eucalyptus like trees. Then followed by cucurbitales. It is a, an order wherein we have some plant taxa which we use in as common vegetables. Then followed by favales. Favales is an order wherein we have the legumes followed by pagales. This pagales order is followed by malphigiales which is followed by auxilidales. In addition to these orders, we have few more orders in the eudicots like rosales, brascales, malvales, sapendales, Cornales, Ericales, Gentianales, Lamiales. Lamiales is the common order wherein in we have the mint plant. The various aromatic plants they belong to the Lamiales. Then we have Solanales, Apiales, Astrales. Astrales is a very large group of plants eudicots and this astrales is lastly followed by one order called as dipsicales. 